Hello and welcome to Pep Talk with me, Mr Pepperell. Today I'm thinking about how I can stop heat energy transfer out of my house. By the end of this video, you should be able to tell me how I can reduce the rate of heat energy transfer out of my home. You should be able to tell me what a U value is and you should be able to tell me if solar heating is free. So, we pretty much know all the physics we need to know relating to heat energy transfer, but why is it important to us? Well, <laughs> you'll soon find out when you start paying your own heating bills, but let's have a little think about it now. So, when you start heating your house in the winter, you create a temperature differential or a, a difference in temperature between the indoors, where it's nice and warm, and the outdoors, where it is still cold okay and we know that heat energy is transferred from areas of high temperature to areas of relatively low temperature so when you open the door the energy starts to flow out of out of your house and your house starts to cool down and there's also plenty of other areas that you can lose heat energy from as well you can lose heat energy from the windows out of the door through the roof even through the walls of your house okay but luckily we know a bit about physics and there are plenty of ways to prevent heat loss from your home so firstly you can stop heat loss through the roof of your house by insulating your loft with that yellow sort of fluffy stuff there which is actually fiber glass now that is made out of glass as the name suggests and glass as we know is a very good insulator or a poor conductor so that stops heat moving through your roof to start with okay the fiber glass is full of tiny air pockets which also cut down on convection current so that's stopping heat loss through your roof now the second thing you can do is use something in between the two walls of your house called cavity wall insulation okay now cavity wall insulation is put between the inner and outer walls of your house and it's made from an insulating material and again it traps the air in little pockets and stops convection currents forming between the two layers of your wall which are going to lead to heat loss so what else can we do? Well, firstly, I can put aluminium foil down behind my radiators, which might seem a bit strange, but what that does is reflects back any infrared radiation into the room and stopping it being conducted away through the wall. Um, what else can we do? Finally, we can use double glazing. OK, now between the two panes of glass there, we've either trapped dry air, which is a very good insulator, or there's actually a vacuum and an absence of air between the two glass panes. And that vacuum won't allow any conduction to take place at all. And it also prevents convection currents um, forming between the two panes, which means that energy is not going to be transferred away. OK, so we know that we can use different materials to insulate our homes. But how do we know which material is the best one to use? Well, we can find out by comparing what is known as the U value. OK, and the U value of a material is defined as the amount of energy that transfers through one meter square of that material in one second. So the lower the U value, the better, as this means less energy is transferred through that material. OK, so if we just have another little example a minute, if we think about the double glazing we just talked about there, um, a double glazed window has a U value four times less than a single pane of glass, which means it would take four times as long as a single pane of glass for double glazing to lose the same amount of energy. So basically the rule when it comes to U values is if you want to use the material as an insulator, the lower the better. And here's the good news. We can also use heat energy transfer to our advantage to help us heat water in our homes using these things, which are solar heating panels. OK, now on a hot day, we've got solar radiation coming down, falling on these panels here, which are actually made up of um, copper pipes. OK, which we know copper is a good conductor and they're painted black as well. So we know they're going to absorb a lot of infrared radiation. Now, the metal pipes conduct the heat and it warms the water which flows through them okay and the water flows to a heat exchanger which then heats up the water ready for you to use in your bath okay brilliant you might think free energy and yeah the fuel or the sunlight is free but the problem is you've had to pay for the solar heating panels to begin with which were probably pretty expensive so here is the big question OK, does the money you save make it worth buying these panels in the first place? Well, that all depends on something called the payback time. And the payback time is the time it takes you to save the money that you paid out for installation in the first place. OK, now let's think about a little example of our panels here. OK, my solar panels cost me initially one thousand pounds to install. 
and over the course of the year every single year they are saving me a hundred pounds so you might think yeah that sounds quite good but if you have a think about it it actually does then take me 10 years to make back the money i spent to install them in the first place okay so i've got a payback time there of 10 years which is you know pretty good i'll, I'll live in a house for 10 years okay but if you work out a payback time and it's massive, say 90 years, then in all fairness, you're probably going to be dead before you get the money back you paid for installation. So it's not worth it in terms of the money you're going to save. So that's everything we need to know about heating and insulating our homes and also everything we need to know for the P1 topic on heat energy transfer. Any problems with anything, don't hesitate to tweet me at Mr. Underscore Pepperell or email me and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for stopping by.